So I also watched several films from the uh, French director, Julien de Vivier. Um, he is probably best known in France for his, or at least Americans who know French movies, they've probably seen Pepe Le Moco, which was remade um, starring Charles Boyer later, but Pepe Le Moco is a crime film from 1937. He then came to America and made several films, including um, Marie Antoinette, The Great Waltz, Lydia, Tales of Manhattan, um, Anna Karenina, that was in England, actually. And then he went back to France and made more French movies. So, but he started as a silent film, started in 1919. Had one of those careers, went all over the place. I watched three of his films because I had seen, um, I think I'd seen the fourth one in the set already. I think that's why I watched, how, why I watched only three. Now I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I have a great memory. Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. I'm on the wrong spot. Hold on. We're going to look this up. But Julien de, Julien de Vivier uh, directed one of my favorite Joseph Cotton movies. There goes my light. One of my favorite Joseph Cotton movies, um, Lydia, which co-stars um, Merle Oberon and is on Filmstruck. It's the only place you can watch it. Um... And one of the films that I watched was actually a remake of his own film. So of Lydia's remake of his own film. Oh, yeah. So the fourth one in the... Oh, no. I did watch four movies. I just don't have the things open. Hold on. Hold on. Hold. Hold on. Yeah, so there's this set that's called uh, Julien Duvivier in the 30s. I just didn't have all the tabs open. I watched four, <laughs> I watched four of these films all together. Um, here we go. Let's make sure I have them in the right order that I watched them in. Ah, I'm messing everything up. Ah, okay. So, okay. So, I watched all four of these films in this, this collection. They're on Criterion Channel, but you can get them if the disc is still in print um, as an Eclipse set. A lot of those Eclipse sets are out of print. That's why I've been watching so many of them while they're still on Criterion Channel because um, they're out of print, and this is, this is the only way to do it. So, David Golder, based on a novel by Erin um, Nimrovsky, probably best known for her posthumous book, Sweet Francais. And actually, uh, David Golder was re-released after the popularity of Sweet Fonce, a lot of her earlier work was re-released. It is about a man named David Golder, who is um, who left, um, I think it's Poland, renamed himself, made a lot of money, moves to France, has a terrible wife and a, and a terrible daughter, and realizes that money can't buy you love. That's pretty much the plot. More things happen, but that's that's the gist of it. Um, this film is utterly gorgeous. You can feel De Vivier still sort of having silent film aesthetics. There's not a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of faces and gesturing and gorgeous camera placements and glittering gowns and, and dissolves and things um, that made the late silent era so lush and gorgeous. Really, you can feel it in this film, and it was just an utter treat to watch. I absolutely loved it. Uh, Harry Bauer plays the titular David Golder. His daughter is played by Jackie Monnier, who is not in very many movies, and I apparently posted the very first photo of her on Instagram, or at least the very first person to use her name as a hashtag. Um, she's in several silent films. Um, the Chess Player, which I watched earlier this year, and what West Front 1918. So, um, crazy that I watched so many of her movies all in one year. Just a great domestic drama with, um, similar to a lot of things that happened in this era, like, um, super rich people realizing that their la lavish lifestyle is hollow is really, and that, um, a lot of people can be just really selfish. It's pretty much what this film's about. The next one I watched was called Foi de Corot, and I believe it was a remake uh, of de Vivier's 
The movie made a silent version of this film and then remade it. It also stars Harry Bauer, and it's about um, a young boy whose nickname is Poix de Carotte, also known as Carrot Pot, whose mother uh, is so awful to him that eventually he starts to feel suicidal. And, and it's really intense, super intense. Um, the very end sequence where he, spoilers, almost kills himself, um, is harrowing. Apparently, this story is a very popular French story, and it has been adapted into many, many works. And I'm like, what? Um, the kid is really, really good. His name is um, Robert Lignan, and his story is also amazing. He joined the resistance at 19 and sadly at 23, I believe it was, was killed by the Nazis um, trying to save his country. So he was a child star. He was like the equivalent of Macaulay Culkin of like 30s um, France and, and went off to war and was killed trying to like save his country from Nazis. So there's some interesting history plus this, this depressing story. Um, you know, who knows? Okay. The next one I watched was a thriller from 1933 called La Tête d'un Homme. And basically, um, it's about a man who's trying to find somebody to kill his wealthy aunt so he can inherit money to pay for his uh, mistress. That's the plot. Um... Eventually, this plot is found when the aunt is murdered, and a detective has to track all of this down to figure out who did it, why they did it, etc., etc. It's a very fun, often dark, like it, it's one of those films that goes back and forth between being kind of jovial and then being like pitch black. So if you like, if you like that kind of that kind of thriller. Um, this is recommended. And then the final one that I watched, because I did indeed watch four. I was like, I lost count. Um, in America, it was known as Christine. There's like 10,000 films known as Christine. In French, it's Un Carnet de Bal, and it is the film that would later become Lydia in America. And it's called Christine in the English world because the main character's name is Christine. Um, she's played by Marie Bell, and she, much like the film Lydia, she has, well, not actually, in the film Lydia, it's a little different. They they change the plot a little bit. In this version, she is a woman who has recently been, been widowed, and she's in her, her late 30s. She's thinking back to her de debutante ball and all of the men that she danced with, and so she's decided she wants to look in, look back at the life of all of these men that she danced with at this, at this ball only to discover that every single one of them's life was ruined because she didn't love them. She didn't love them back. Um, and essentially, much like in Lydia, real, well, actually, Lydia, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, this version is very depressing. In the end, she realizes that life is futile and that everything is, me that melancholy is the only way to really look at your life because everything's disappointing. And Lydia it gets a little more Americanized and happy. Um, similar story, slightly happier ending. But this had an opening sequence where they're filming, well, not an opening sequence, it was after she, when she's thinking back to the ball, where it has these just people dancing in this like dreamlike state. And the camera, like they're moving and the camera's moving and it flows through these dresses. Oh, it was just, just breathtaking. Um, gorgeously shot. It appears this story has six credited writers. That's too many writers. Um, and they all hate their life because it has a very depressing ending. So, uh, let's go back and look at these titles. All from Julien Duvivier. It's David Golder from 1931. Um, Bois de Carotte from 1932. The Tête d'un Homme from 1933, 
I'm Car I'm Carnet the Bal from 1937. I recommend them all. Uh, Duvivier is a great filmmaker. He is a lush filmmaker. He is able to bring a sense of opulence to any situation. I highly recommend checking out his films. They are fantastic. They're in a Criterion Eclipse set. You can also watch them right now on the Criterion channel.